what's up guys my name is ben welcome to the swanky cat productions channel where i try to put at least one snowmobile video out every week today we're going to be talking a bit about my castle helmet here as we ride through these beautiful freshly groomed central wisconsin trails here absolutely cannot wait actually took the half day today to get on these trails and ride them when they're fresh so super excited about that definitely excited to tell you about this helmet and i'm going to do most of that on the trail but before we do that i just kind of want to give you a quick real real quick overview of it if you guys want to look up specs and stuff you can take a look down in the description i'll have a link for this you can read up on all that stuff if you want what i'm going to show you right now what i'm going to talk about today are just some key features that i really enjoy and maybe something that I'm uh, not so happy about, something that happened last night. So here we've got the roost guard, and then we've got a dual pane heated windshield. And if we open this up and slide this to the side, we get a tinted shield on the inside there. Below that, of course, is your nose curtain there. That has a little piece of material in here that you can kind of form fit to your nose. A little bit of foam on the inside of that. On the underside of the helmet, we've got the chin curtain there, which is removable. And of course, if I pull on this red lever here, the whole top flips up, like so. And now you can see I've got a boom mic in here for my BTS Bluetooth communicator there. I also have a mic on the inside that you probably can't quite see that is wrapped around my Pro Shop mount here, which works excellent on this helmet. The black box right here that that microphone runs into is just a microphone adapter for the Hero 7 here. This also has pass-through power, so when I'm talking to you guys today on the trail, this actually will not even have a battery in it. I've got a power pack in my pocket that just plugs into the USB-C port on the top here. I'm going to throw this on. We're going to head down the trail, and I'll tell you what I think of it. We're actually going to be meeting a couple buddies out in the trail here that do not know that I have this sled yet. And if you guys missed those videos, if you, you're not subscribed to the channel yet, I actually do not own this sled. Someone came and dropped it off in my driveway and told me to ride it this winter and make some videos for you guys on it. So here we are out enjoying this beautiful machine on this beautiful day. Huge thanks to you. Uh, it's a subscriber turned patron turned riding buddy. And uh, I actually need to say a, a big thank you to all of my patrons out there really appreciate the extra support you guys add of course that makes things more economical but more so than that more importantly for me it's something that really drives me to get out here and make more videos and make better videos uh, the the willingness uh, of you guys to support me monetarily every month really is a, a huge driver uh, for me to do that and to, to keep getting better and better so huge thanks to you guys and that's actually uh something that i should hit uh right away that it may or may not uh, skew my view of this helmet. I actually did not pay for this, however, I'm not sponsored or anything. Uh, it was actually a patron that gave it to me. Let's see what Crossfire Jason thinks of the new ride. Hey, good! Do you know about that yet or not? That is a 2019 ZR6000. One of my subscribers slash patrons slash uh, new riding buddies came and dropped it off in my driveway a week ago. What? And told me to ride it and make videos on it. <laughs> Where'd uh, Arctic Cat Andy go? You can have an issue. We, uh, we have more thoughts than miles on it. And stuff. Oh no. Yeah. Ugh. We got some snow. <laughs> Woo, I love this sled. So, what was I saying now? Uh, I have not been. Uh, drafted by uh, Castle to make videos for them. I, I'm not getting paid to do this review or anything uh, But just kind of keep in mind that I did not actually fork out the money for this personally Another thing that I feel like I should point out is that this is my first nice snowmobile helmet Originally actually I was rocking just a, an open MX helmet with a set of single pane goggles then I did move my way up to a winterized G-Max GM11, which is, whoa, that's icy, a dual sport helmet with just kind of like a winter kit. Uh, still like a $130 helmet, so nothing super nice. There he is. Hey, it's going good. Is this too familiar? 
<laughs> All right, so, so I know this video is supposed to be about the, the helmet, but uh, we've got a bit of a, an issue here. That's not not making the sled run so good, so he's trying to blow that out there. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to put my lips on it. I'm being I wouldn't here. either. It doesn't want to come out. Yeah, I don't imagine that it would. <laughs> wow. What is in there? Maybe try sucking on the other instead of blowing. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Alright, he's on. One thing I noticed is that gas drives your hands out. They look really uh, kind of gray and funny now. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, not bad. All right, so with all that said and their pairs out of the way onto the helmet here so the peak on the top here honestly i cannot even see through the visor uh, so i think it's mostly aesthetic i think with the lens open i could probably pick it out just a little bit uh, but it's not going to really do anything as far as kind of keeping the sun out of your eyes which is really kind of the intent behind a roost guard on a dual sport helmet or an MX helmet uh, or to uh, keep dirt out of your face if somebody roosts you. So really just there for looks. Uh, definitely looks cool and I'm glad it's there. The little visor on the inside, the flip down deal, when I flip it down now it looks like it's actually pretty clear. But I have had some days where I flipped it down uh, and it's probably partially due to how hard I'm riding, partially due to uh, the temperature and the dew point and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but I flipped it down a couple times and realized that it was way too foggy to see anything. It obviously, uh, like I like I just mentioned here today, it's not going to be like that all the time. Woo! But it's not always going to be there for you uh, when you need it, uh, at least not without maybe taking the helmet off and cleaning it up a bit. The other thing that I've noticed is the yellow that this one came with anyhow is not really any good uh, for riding in on sunny days. I think it's kind of supposed to be more for when it's sort of overcast and snowy. Uh, I think that's when when this kind of yellow high-vis type thing is supposed to be most useful. I think maybe eventually I will see if I can switch it out for a darkened lens. Wow. When they said they were going to log this, they were not kidding. Stay out of the county forest this year. <laughs> Note to self. It's like riding on an ice rink. The nose curtain deal on the inside is pretty comfortable. Uh, I don't really have anything negative to say about it at all. It seems like it's held up well so far. Uh, however, after a while, I'm sure just like any other helmet or any other material, whoa, that sees a lot of sweat and abrasion, uh, it's probably gonna wear out. But uh, for now, anyways, it seems like it's working good. Uh, chin curtain, same deal, works good, no complaints. Uh, as far as installing all of my equipment on here was a little bit different for me because I'm not used to a modular helmet, but uh, it all really went pretty well. Uh, no complaints with that at all. The modularity, is that is that the right term for it? The modularity is absolutely awesome. Because of that and just in general, uh, because I like this helmet so much and I, honestly I, I don't even I don't even know what it is specifically. I don't think it is one specific thing. I think it's just everything, partially the fit, um, partially how quiet it is. It, I just, I really like it, and I think what I'm going to do this summer, actually, is divulge from my uh, long line of G-Max helmets and pick the summer uh, version of this up, which is actually a, a Scorpion helmet, and there is an S on this. It is technically a Castle brand, uh, but it's just rebranded and winterized, uh, so I think I'm, I'm in love with it enough that I'm going to fork out the money, which is very out of character for me, uh, and, and pick up the same thing uh, in a summer version for motorcycle riding this year, so I guess maybe that should tell you how much I like this helmet that I'm willing to to jump up from my $130 helmets to whatever the summer version of this costs. This is a size large, which is what I normally wear, uh, but it seems like the Scorpion helmets maybe run a little bit tighter than, it, at least than my G-Max did. What else did I have? I had a Speed and Strength, that was a large, uh, that's a motorcycle helmet. Those, a large was all good for me, uh, maybe even a little bit big at times, depending on how long my hair was. I used to be able to wear the, or I still, I guess, can wear the G-Max helmet with my super long hair, with a, whatever they are, I can't think of the name, the thing that goes all the way over your head, just a real thin material, but the first time that I rode this with all that, I could not think straight. This helmet was squeezing my head so tight. Uh, 
I think you guys wanted to keep going right, right? So what was I talking about now? I guess my, my hippie hair. Uh, once I chop that all off and down to just my buzz cut here, uh, this helmet fits a lot better and it, it definitely fits my head really, really well. Uh, like I said, it, it kind of just fits like a glove where all my other helmets you're kind of sloshing around in. And I think, please feel free to correct me woo, if I'm wrong about this, but I believe uh, the more expensive helmets, usually this one included, are sized uh, on the outside for the size that they are, not just kind of a one size fits all with different padding or different foam inside of them, which I, I think definitely helps with the overall fit of it. And like I said, now that it's packed out a little bit, now that I got my hair short, I absolutely love it. But definitely something you want to keep in mind when you're ordering your size. I, I think in general, the Scorpions do just run a little bit tighter. And actually, now that I've been kind of thinking about all that, I, I remember that I actually had a Scorpion MX helmet a long time ago. And that was the case with that one as well. So like I said earlier, this thing is definitely sealed up well. Um, seems like a lot quieter than my G-Max is, uh, which I think is kind of to be expected. But one thing that I noticed right away with it, woo, and now we're kind of getting into the, the part that I do not like about this. And I, I think any of you that have owned really nice, expensive snowmobile helmets probably already knew this. Uh, but for somebody that's coming from the inexpensive side of woo, head protection, uh, you're going to be a little surprised at how well these are sealed up, uh, in, not in a good sense, but in a sense that they really, really trap everything. Uh, your heat, of course, which is nice, but also the moisture from your breath. When you take this helmet off at the end of the day, it is going to be all full of ice and the mouthpiece is going to be soaking wet. Um, now that's, you know, maybe a little bit gross, not a huge deal, but that can leak up into the visor portion. And even though it is a dual pane visor, woo, because there's so much more moisture going up into it, once you hit a little, a temperature that's a little bit closer uh, to the dew point, then say we are well at right now, you're going to start to have some problems. And I have not had a single issue with this during the day. Uh, it's just, like I said, when you get kind of closer to that dew point, which essentially just means there's so much moisture in the air compared to the, the temperature. And at a certain temperature, air can only hold so much moisture. Um, basically what happens when you get so saturated like that, when you exhale, there's no place for that moisture to go uh, other than attached to your helmet. And of course, even with it being dual pane, as it gets colder, that can start to ice up on you. And I never, well, I shouldn't say never, I almost never had a problem with my G-Max icing up. And that was not a heated helmet. Woo. Or uh, a heated visor. This one is, uh, and I think probably the very first time that I had it out, I noticed a little bit of ice creeping down the side of it. So I just plugged it in, no big deal. That was on my sled. Uh, then when I took this sled out, uh, for the first time kind of towards dusk last night, I plugged my cable into it. At some point it let loose, um, and by it, I mean the, the hot line that attaches to this. So I had no power, and I was a lot further away from home than I thought I was. And I was dangerously close to the dew point, or the, the air was, I guess, anyway. And this thing started to ice up on me, and it iced up hard. I was having to stop every couple minutes and de-ice it. I was riding just about as fast as I could comfortably do with my head turned to the side so I could see out the clear portion here. Oh, that was that was an absolute mess and it's it's definitely something that I think you need to keep in mind uh, or at least be aware of when you're purchasing a helmet like this and actually that, that whole thing icing up and having to look out the side that is totally 100% my fault. Uh, the guy that is lending me the sled and actually that uh, same guy that sent me the helmet clearly warned me uh, that these electric heaters uh, or electric visors can fail one way or another and uh, you should definitely keep a set of goggles along with you and of course I mental mental noted that and promptly did absolutely nothing about that uh, guess I didn't think I'd have an issue that quick but that is absolutely nowhere near enough of a reason to not pick one of these helmets up uh, I would definitely now spend the money on one of these um, I've seen the other side of the helmet world here and it is definitely good. I am, holy man, where'd all the snow go? 
uh, I'm definitely happy with this helmet so hopefully this video was at least entertaining I apologize we got off track several times but that just kind of happens Woo! so if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like like I said if you guys want to see more videos like this every week then click that swanky cat logo down at the bottom click the bell after you subscribe it'll let you know anytime I put one of these videos out other than that guys if you can get out and enjoy these beautiful trails in this beautiful world make sure you do that today but hey if you can't here's more videos to check out in the meantime take care stay safe and stay swanky